Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Fangirl Thursday. I'm super excited to have everyone here with me this evening to do my May wrap up. Um, we're going to give this just a few minutes, see if we can get some people loaded in here. I have a few little notes of housekeeping to make to let you guys know about, and then we'll jump in and get started. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Always nice to have you guys pop in. We're going to give it a few minutes and see if we get some people in here. I've got a few notes of housekeeping to make um, and a announcement to let you guys know about as well. So I just want to give it a few minutes and get some people in here before I do that. I hope everyone is doing well. I am still at home, working from home during the uh, quarantine, and I saw my doctor today, and he did not recommend that I go back into the office yet. He said unless there was going to be um, a plexiglass shield between me and the customers, I didn't need to be there, and they haven't incorporated that into my office yet, so home it is for me, and I got to say, kind of like being at home and working from home. I don't miss my drive-in. I thought I would miss my coworkers. I don't. I'm content to just sit home in my library slash office and, and work from here. So hopefully uh, the office doesn't throw a fit about it or anything like that. For the time being, I'll just stay home. So if you are just popping in, Thank you for joining me for Fangirl Thursday. I am doing my May wrap up tonight. Before I jump in with the uh, May wrap up, I do want to make a quick little announcement to you guys. Um, not sure how many of you have already heard or if you um, are aware of who Nathan Weller is, but he's a cover model from the book industry. He's been on models, uh, he's been on models, he's modeled on covers for uh, Cambria Hebert as well as Casey Bond, and I have two of his covers showcased here for you. And then I've also included two photos of Nathan from various book events that I have attended that he um, was at as well. Nathan passed away this week. No one has announced what those circumstances are. So our thoughts and prayers go out to Nathan's family and friends and loved ones, um, regardless of what the circumstances around his death was. Uh, it's always awful to see someone lost like that in the prime of their life. And I wish nothing but love and light to his family and his friends. A little bit of a somber note there. Moving on, I do have a little bit of housekeeping to share with you guys tonight. Um, just wanted to let you know that I'm going to start incorporating something on my blog to go along with Fangirl Thursday here. I am going to start adding a blog post every Thursday, and I'm going to share it with you guys um, during the live event. And that blog post is going to feature all of the audiobooks and books that I do for my wrap up. And it's going to give you the um, book information, the blurb, my review, and a buy link. So for any of you guys like you, Mary, who likes to jot down notes to keep track of some books or things that you'd like to add to your to be read list, I am hoping to make that easier for you by giving you a link direct to the blog. And that way you can go there and see all of the information in black and white. Or in the case of my blog, purple, black, and white. <laughs> so hopefully that will make it a little bit easier for you to keep up with everything. Um, I have already gotten that posted for you guys. It is, um, there's a link shared in the comments for you so that you can make sure you check it out later on tonight. Melanie, hi, thank you for joining me. Um, since you're popping in a little late, I'll uh, catch you up. We were doing housekeeping, um, letting everyone know that I am going to um, add a blog post to correspond along with Fangirl Thursday. 
to uh, keep up with the feature here. So all of the audiobooks and books that I talk about on my wrap up is going to be included in a Fangirl Thursday post. You'll find the cover, the book details, the blurb, my review, and a buy link for the book or audiobook that I've talked about on here. Um, I know Mary especially likes to jot down notes and make uh, a list of books that she wants to take a look at later and possibly read. I'm hoping that this will um, help you guys out so that you have all of the information in one place. And I'm saving everything, I'm archiving everything on my blog related to this under um, Fangirl Thursday and also under Lens Reviews. So you'll be able to go back if you miss an episode or you, you can't remember the name of a book or something like that. You'll be able to go back and hopefully narrow down your search um, so that you're able to look it up. So. Yay, that's what we've been talking about. Um, and we also, Melanie, I don't know if you had heard, we uh, talked about the passing of Nathan Weller. He was a cover model in the book industry, and I've met him a couple of times at three or four different events, and he passed away um, earlier this week. So we are sending love and light to all of his friends and family out there. We're very sorry for your loss and just want to let you guys know that we are thinking about him and you as well. Okay, I think I've got everything all caught up. So let's dive in to the May wrap up. I initially had this posted on my blog as the May wrap up part two because apparently I thought I had read a ton of books this month and I had already done a May wrap up and this was my second May wrap up and I was wrong. Apparently I had it confused with April and with March because I did it then. But May was not that fruitful when it came to reading after I went back to Goodreads and checked to make sure of all the reviews and everything that I had posted for the month. So it may, may has just really thrown me for a loop and um, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. Absolutely crazy trying to keep up with everything. So without further ado, I will dive into the few audiobooks and the book that I read. So I will start with, there we go. I have featured, there's a new witch in town on the page before. We've also had the author, um, Carolyn Ritter Aspenson, come on here as well. Um, there's a new witch in town. I think it came out in February or March, and I did a review for the book and had the author come on and chat about it. It is a cozy paranormal mystery and I think it's a really really cute book um, or audiobook depending on which one you get. The um, narrator is Jamie Moore and she did a great great job with this book and there is a second book coming out in this series later this summer so I'm hoping to get an art copy of that excuse me so that I can dive into that as well. Just to tell you a little bit about There's a New Witch in Town. It's about um, Addie O'Dell, and she has just found out that she's a witch and that she has a talking uh, cat, and um, his name is Cooper, and he absolutely steals the show. Um, she, uh, Her mother passes away, and Addie comes into her powers because her mother had her powers bound. So um, Addie's an, an adult. She um, she lives alone, just her and her cat, and now she's inherited her mother's parrot. Um, and of course her powers come since she's no longer bound. So she's just discovered that she's a witch, that she has a talking familiar. His name is Cooper. And um, she her mother's best friend runs a cafe, a coffee shop and bookstore in town. And she kind of helps her navigate um, how to kind of settle into her powers and get things under control. But at the same time, um, someone is in town trying to murder Addie and they want to take her powers. 
And it's kind of hard for her to defend herself when she didn't even know she was a witch. So it turns out she lives in a town full of magics and supernaturals. So she's uh, basically learning about this entirely new life that she's gotten and um, also having her life threatened at the same time. So she kind of has to dig into her past to figure out some things that have happened there, um, find out why her mother bound her powers in the first place and who is after her and why. So that's kind of where the mystery of it comes into. It's a great fun read. I absolutely love the cat Cooper in this. And um, he, he completely steals the show. I, he's great. I loved him. So um, if you're into cozy mysteries and you like a little extra witchiness thrown in there, this is a great series to check out from um, Carolyn Ritter. Aspenson. Highly recommend it. So let's see what else we've got down here on the little screen. Up next, we have When Witches Bleed, and that is from Casey Bond. Um, initially, I was supposed to read the book, actually, of When Witches Bleed over for the um, bookish life with Melanie and Heather. However, life happened and I didn't make it through the book. Honestly, it's like 400 something pages and well, it was a little daunting. Um, but luckily, the uh, 13 hour audiobook came out and I got a copy of it. And I got to say, I loved, loved hearing this on the audiobook. The uh, narrator is Alexi Graves, and she did a fantastic job bringing to life the characters in this book and really helping me to connect to the story and with the characters. And that's really important when you're narrating a story. If you are not familiar with what the story is about, it follows Sable, who's the daughter of fate. Um, she has been called to the um, king's house, to his castle, by um, Prince Tarin. And she's been requested to come in because um, she did a reading for Tarin and it wasn't, it wasn't good news. So um, someone's trying to kill him. And they're trying to figure out who that someone is and why. So um, fate tells her that she needs to be there. She needs to be with the prince and that she needs to protect him. And so um, I lost my train of thought. So anyway, she goes to the castle. She's trying to protect the prince. At the same time, there is a almost like bachelorette type thing going on or bachelor type thing going on in that um, ladies from the kingdom, from um, all the kingdoms have been invited. There are 13 ladies in the castle and they are all there to meet the prince and basically to kind of audition and vie to, uh, to be his wife. So there's a lot going on with this book and um, it's a young adult fantasy romance. So if you like that genre, I definitely suggest that you check out Casey Bond. She's a fantastic writer and I have absolutely murdered the blurb to the story. So check it out on my blog. It, I do it much, much more justice when you get to the blog. Um, in terms of my review, <laughs> I had a book hangover from hell on this one. Oh my gosh, it ended. And I was just like, I couldn't write a review. I couldn't move on to another story. Couldn't move on to another audiobook. It just sort of took a couple of days for it to all resonate. And I had to wait for the story to let me go, so to speak, before I could move on and do anything else. And that says a lot for the for the writing and for the narrating of the story. So definitely, definitely recommend that one. Lastly, on my audiobook trail this month, I listened to The Dead Boys Club by Rue Volley. I am a huge fan of Rue Volley's, um, especially her YA work. I'm not familiar with some of her um, adult books, but the YA, I'm a huge fan of that. And this one was certainly, certainly um, did not disappoint. The uh, Dead Boys Club 
is about 15 year old Harper J. Ellis, and she lives in Juniper Hollow, which is a hotbed for paranormal activity. I think it goes better if I just read the blurb instead of trying to surmise it because that didn't work last time. So anyway, Harper J., she's living in Juniper Hollow, and in that particular town, and this is an important fact to keep in mind when reading the book, the dead outnumber the living 10 to 1. Let that sink in. There's more dead than living in this town. Yeah. So, Harper likes to spend her days in the graveyard reading paranormal romance books. And she's obsessed over boys, but she's obsessed over what she calls the dead boys. She's obsessed with book boyfriends. How many of us, yes, are obsessed with book boyfriends? Melanie, I know you are. Um, this is the perfect, perfect book um, to kind of shed some light on how we all feel. I read the first chapter and I thought, holy crap. It's like, it's like Rue Volley looked into my brain and pulled all of that out because that's exactly how I feel reading books a lot of times. So it was awesome to connect to this book on that level. Um, there's strange things happening in this town. She meets a young man and um, he's a new person in town, new guy at school, and he has a crush on her. And he's always hanging around and popping up, so to speak. And so she really starts to question as to whether or not he's a ghost or not. So I can't really tell you anything more about this because it's got an ending that you like, holy crap. I got to read this book again. Yeah, one of those. Um, this story is not anything like what I expected it to be. I'm not really sure what I thought going in because honestly, the blurb is a little vague as far as what the book is about. But once you read it, you understand why the blurb is what the blurb is. Um, so like I said, I, I didn't know really what I expected. And then as I'm reading it, and I think I know what's going on, and I think I know what's what. Yeah. Um, none of it was what I thought. So there's that. Um, fantastic ending. Cannot wait for the next book in the series. Cannot wait. It's going to be a great one. So that wraps up the audiobooks that I did for the month. And before I jump onto anything else, I noticed that we've got some comments that have popped in over here. So I'm going to jump in over here. Hi, Mary. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Brandy. I hope your husband's doing well tonight. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Um, Brandy, since you came in after I made this announcement, I just wanted to let you know that I am incorporating something new with Fangirl Thursday. I am also doing a blog post on twogirlsinabook.com, which I've shared the link to the two tonight's blog post in this conversation. Um, so just check for it in the comments. Um, so there's a blog post and it's my Fangirl Thursday wrap up. I've included all the audiobooks and books that I read for the month the um, information on the books, the blurb, my review, and buy links for each book and audiobook. So anything that you see here tonight that you want some more information on, or in the case of When Wishes Leave, and I butchered the blurb and didn't do it justice, you can certainly head over to the blog and check all of that out over there. Um, yes, Mary. Um, Rue Volley is amazing at writing series. I'm not sure if you are familiar with any of her work, but she does write um, 13 Ways to Midnight. There are currently four books out in the series. The fifth one is supposed to come out um, later this summer, I believe, and that's supposed to be the final book in the series as well. So, um, Cannot wait to get my hands on that. I have not read the fourth book in the series, 13 Ways to Midnight, because there's a questionable ending in book three. And I didn't like it. Ripped my heart out. Left me dangling, literally, on a cliff. 
So I've been putting off picking up book four for over a year now because it's going to tell me if what I think happened in book three really happened. And if it did, I'm going to be crushed. But knowing Rue Volley, it didn't really happen the way I think it happened and I'll be fine. But I'm still really, really nervous going in and no one spoiled it for me. So, yeah. I'm going to have to read it next month, though. It is on my TBR for June because, yeah, I got to be prepared for when book five comes out. Um, oh, great. Brandy, I'm so excited. I'm glad your hubby is doing well. And I think that catches me up on any news you missed, Brandy. So we are good to go there. So moving back in with the reviews, I did manage to read an actual book this month. Um, and that book was Vendetta by Stacey Rourke. I actually had her on on her release day back on May the 14th, where she talked about the book in the series. And it's kind of hard to talk about the book because it's book three in the series. Um, but it's an awesome series. If you like a badass female, a strong female character lead, a heroine, if you will, heroine. You know, either way I say it, it sounds like I'm saying the drug, but you know what I meant. Anywho, um, country, southern, can't help it. This is a, gr a great read. I highly recommend the book and the series. The covers are spectacular for the entire series. And there is actually a box set coming out on, it's in June, June 10th or 13th or something. I can't remember, but it's available for pre-order right now. And you can get all three books in a beautiful collection. And it's awesome. So uh, Vincenza is the main character of Vendetta. And in the second book, Vlad, she marries Dracula, Vlad the Impaler. And at the wedding, as you can tell from the cover of Vendetta, it was an absolute and total bloodbath. Um, some things happen and hell gets unleashed courtesy of Vincenza. Um, hence the bloody wedding dress. So we, we come into book three and she's looking for revenge. She's uh, bound to determine she's going to destroy those that have destroyed her life. So um, again, it's kind of hard to talk about if you haven't read the other ones, but basically um, she's a, an engineered vampire. So she was not born a vampire. She was not bitten and turned into a vampire. She basically was created in a lab. Um, she's married to Vlad the Impaler. And she is now also the Dragon Queen and has a newfound darkness living inside of her. Um, so if you thought your muse was wicked, wait till you hear what the dragon says to Vincenza. So again, it's a great series. Um, the first book in the series is Veiled. The second book is Vlad. And the final book is Vendetta. And those are by Stacey Bork. So I highly recommend those. Highly recommend those. So that is everything for my May wrap up. I do have some additional news for you guys. Again, you can see all of my reviews and all the information and buy links for these books on my blog post at twogirlsinabook.com and there is a link for it shared here in the comments for you guys as well so make sure that you check that out if you want any more information on anything that you saw here in the show tonight. Um, also want to give you guys a little bit of an update in case you didn't already know, we've officially made it official once again. The Bookish Life now has its own Facebook page, The Bookish Life, and it is hosted and run by none other than Melanie Gilbert. And Heather, her sister, and I come on and co-host with her. We kind of alternate throughout the month. I'm usually on there one to two times a month with Melanie. And we talk about everything from writing and blogging to um, books that we've read, audiobooks that we've reviewed, um, all that good stuff. So pretty much anything related to reading and writing and blogging, we try to incorporate some of that 
into each one of the episodes. So um, it's been on now for two months and it's going to be on Wednesday nights and it will, the new time is 6.30. So it is moving to 6.30. Um, oh, Mary, I'm sorry you missed it yesterday. Um, we do record those. And I do have a copy of the recorded episode. I just don't have it posted to the page yet, Mary, but it will be on there. Um, it may be Friday or Saturday before I get it up on there. But don't hold me to that. Um, <laughs> but I do have it recorded and I will be sharing it on the page. So if you haven't already go over and give some love to the bookish life page on Facebook and make sure you put a note on your calendar or in your phones to join us on Wednesday nights at six 30. Um, super excited to be a part of that. I'm having a blast doing it. Um, it's nice to do different formats and different shows and to meet different fans and viewers. Um, so always fun, always fun. That pretty much wraps up anything that I had going on for May. Um, I don't know about you guys. It's been a crazy week for me. Uh, you would have thought being the holiday with the long weekend coming into a shorter week, it would have ran smoothly. No, no, it didn't. It's been nuts. Um, so, I had a doctor's appointment today. I'm fine. Um, I, I have rheumatoid arthritis and I have to go in for infusions every month. And I was having somewhat of a flare this month. I haven't been feeling really great. Um, so my doctor came in and saw me. I got several shots, which is always fun. Um, one, he loaded me up on steroids. So it may be Sunday before I go to sleep, but Hey, maybe I'll get some writing done. Um, so anyway, I went in, had my infusion and all that. I, I've known about this appointment all week long. They have texted me reminders like every single day. I've talked about it with my husband that I had the appointment coming up. Yesterday afternoon at four o'clock, he calls me and says, can you drop your truck off for servicing? Sure, I can do that. So I take my Explorer to town. I drop it off. I say servicing. We were getting a tow hitch put on it. But anyway, um, I drop it off. I come back home. I do the bookish life. I work on some Facebook stuff. I crawl into bed, quarter till 10, get all comfy. I look at the husband and I go, I have a daughter's appointment tomorrow and I don't have a vehicle. Yeah, so that's kind of how it started. So we discussed whether or not I'd be able to just like go back and get my vehicle this morning and just punt at that point. Nope, that wasn't an option because the establishment that we took it to, thankfully, had it locked up in their garage, but they weren't going to open until nine, and my husband had to be at his first job an hour away at eight. So, couldn't go get my vehicle. My lovely husband, though, went, did his appointments. Thankfully, he owns his own business, so he's able to kind of move things around, but he went to, um, he worked from like eight until one thirty. came home, picked me up, drove me an hour back in the direction he had just been in <laughs> yeah, and took me to my doctor's appointment, picked me up for my doctor's appointment. Cause of course they won't let him in with uh, the quarantine and everything and brought me back home. Oh, and we picked up my vehicle, but that's just what happened with the car. Yeah. Just the car. I take a bath this morning and I get dressed. Well, I take a bath this morning and I'm about to get dressed and I realized I haven't shaved my legs and I have the perfect cute outfit planned for the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm faced with the dilemma, plan an entirely new outfit, which I didn't want to do or get back in the tub and shave my legs. So of course I propped myself on the side of the tub and I shaved my legs. I got dressed to brush my teeth. I rinsed out my toothbrush, put everything away, wiped off the counter and thought, hmm, I didn't bother to spit out my toothpaste or rinse out my mouth. Who does that? Who does that? So that was me at eight o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. um, something else crazy happened. 
I did something ridiculous and now I've completely forgotten what it was because of course I have that's bar for the course that's pretty much how today has gone so yeah that's my day I want to know what quarantine has done to you guys this week how are you feeling uh, what ha what crazy or stupid thing have you done this week that's mine <laughs> um, Mary you're at home all day I'm certain that you something something just as crazy has happened to you. Brandy's been running around with her husband. So hopefully she had her head on straight today since she had to, but yeah, mine wasn't, I don't, I don't know what happened with me, but yeah, maybe it was the pain. I don't know, but I'm hopped up on steroids now and I can't shut up. So I need you guys to talk to me. <laughs> Oh, Mary, are you not feeling well? You had to go into the chiropractor. That's a long story. <laughs> well, oh, I can go ahead and give you guys a heads up for what I've got coming up for June. So for June, I've got two arcs to read. I am doing Mate Level 8 by Heather Korn, and her book is releasing on June the 13th, and it is available for pre-order. I do not have that information up on the blog yet, but I'll get on that. And I'm also reading Betrayed by Magic, and um, it's by Elizabeth Kirk. She is coming up with a new serial. Let's see. She's writing a new serial, and the first novella is <laughs> Portrayed by Magic, and it comes out on June the 20th. It is also up and available for pre-order as well. And then I plan to read the fourth book in The 13 Ways to Midnight by Rue Valley, because i got to get caught up on that series. And I am also going to be reading Omega Rising by Douglas Pierce. It is available in paperback and ebook, and The 13 Ways to Midnight is already out. But Mate Level 8 and Betrayed by Magic are both available for pre-order. So let's pop in over here and see how Mary is doing. Oh, bless your heart, Mary. That sounds awful. Um... Mary hit her back in the bathroom on the counter and oh, had to go and visit the chiropractor for that one. Well, I hope you are feeling better, Mary. I am going to get things wrapped up here. Uh, another shout out to Mary and Melanie and Brandy for popping in and hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it so much, you guys. Um, oh, excuse me. Sprite didn't go down right. Burp it over here. I apologize. I'm all sorts of rude. I'm sorry. But you guys have a fantastic night. A great weekend. I will be back to chat with you on Thursday, June the 4th. Don't have the first thing planned. Don't have a guest planned. But we'll see what happens between now and then. And I'll post an update. You guys have a great week. Bye.